there are two, two issues converge here. One is the question, what do we want to accomplish? Uh, what do we reasonably think we can accomplish? And then this, this article of faith that I think circulates, unfortunately, among people of our uh, viewpoint, that you can't argue anyone out of their beliefs. I mean, well, is this a completely fatuous exercise, or can we actually win a war of ideas with people? And, and I think, uh, certainly judging from my email, we can. I mean, I'm constantly getting email from people who have lost their faith and, in effect, been argued out of it. And, and, and the, the straw that broke that camel's back was either one of our books or some other process, process of, of reasoning uh, or uh, incompatibility of what they knew to be true and what they were told by their faith, that um, I think we have to just highlight the fact that it's possible for people to be shown the contradictions and sh- in, internal to their faith or the contradiction between their faith and what we've come to know to be true about the universe, and they just, they, you know, it, it can, the process can take minutes or months or years, but they, they, they have to renounce their superstition in the face of what they now know to be true. I, I was having an argument with a very sophisticated biologist who's a brilliant expositor of evolution, and he uh, still believes in God. And I said, how can you? What, what's this all about? And he said, I accept all your rational arguments. However, it's faith. And then he said this very significant phrase to me, there's a reason that it's called faith. He said it very decisively, very almost aggressively. That there's a reason that it's called faith. And that was to him the absolute knockdown clincher. Uh, right. You can't argue with it because it's faith. And he said it proudly and defiantly rather than in any sort of yeah. apologetic way. You, know, and you get it all the time in North America from people who say you've got to read um, William James and have had to, to be able to judge other people's subjective experiences. which is something that's by definition impossible to do. Right. If it's real to them, why can't you respect it? I mean, this is, wouldn't be accepted in any other field of argument at all. The oppression people are under is the yes. critical thing about them. I had a debate with a very senior Presbyterian in, in Orange County, I asked him, because we were talking about biblical literalism, of which he wasn't an exponent, but Mm. I said, well, what about the graves opening at the time of the crucifixion according to St. Matthew? Matthew, I'd rather say. Mm. And everyone getting out of their graves in Jerusalem, walking around, greeting old friends in the city. I was going to ask him, doesn't that rather cheapen the idea of the resurrection of Jesus? But he mistook my purpose. He wanted to know if I believed that had happened. That was what he thought. Right. And he said that as a historian, which he also was, he was inclined to doubt it. Right. But that as a Presbyterian minister, he thought it was true. Right. Well, well, all right then. How can you no, do no, no, I'm so, see, for me, it was enough that I got him to say that. Right. I said, in that case, I rest right. my case. In fact. Yeah. I don't want to say any more to you now. You've said all I could say. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's one, one other chip I'd like to put on the table here. There's this phenomenon of someone like Francis Collins, or, your, or the, the biologist you just mentioned, who someone who obviously has enough of the facts on board, you know, enough of a scientific e- education to know better, yeah. and still does not know better or professes not to know better. And there, I think we have a cultural problem where, um, and this was actually brought home to me at one talk I gave, a, a physics professor came up to me uh, at the end of the talk and told me that he had brought one of his graduate students who was a, a devout Christian and who was quite shaken by my talk and, the, and, and all I got from uh, of this uh, report was that this was the first time his faith had ever really been explicitly challenged. And so there's something about, that it's, true, it's true to say that you can go through the, the curriculum of becoming a scientist and never have your faith explicitly challenged because it's taboo to do so. And now we have you know, engineers who can build nuclear bombs in the Muslim world who s- still think it's, it's plausible metaphysics that you can get to paradise and get 72 virgins. And we have people like Francis Collins who think that on Sunday you can kneel down in the dewy grass and give yourself to Jesus because you're in the presence of a frozen waterfall. And on Monday you can be a, 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 a physical geneticist. Well, Which according to our friend, uh, uh, the great Pervez uh, Hudboy, the great uh, Pakistani yeah. physicist, there are people who think you can use the jinns, the devils, Right. and harness their power for the reactor. It's, al- it's almost tempting to fund such a project. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and it seems, um, and I gather that, um, again, I, I can't get over him still, the, the respected um, Tariq Ramadan of St. Anthony's College, Oxford, says in his book, I'm told, that he believes in jinns too. Right. 
Right. I hope I'm not doing him an injustice. I've been told that in his book, in the steps of the prophet, he says as much. So one, one is up against things that are flat out primitive and uh, superstitious. I think it may be easier than, we, than we're, we're supposing to shake people's faith. There's been, there's been a moratorium on this for a long time. We're, we're just the, the beginning of a, of, a, of a new wave of explicit attempts to shake people's faith. Mm. And it's bearing fruit. And the obstacles, it seems to me, are, are not that we don't have the facts or the arguments. It's these strategic reasons for not professing it, not admitting it. Uh, not admitting it to yourself, not admitting it in public, because your 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 family is going to view it as a betrayal. Uh, um, you're you're just embarrassed to admit that you were taken in by this for so long. Mm-hmm. Uh, it takes, I think, tremendous courage to just declare that you've given that all up. And if we can find ways to help people find that courage and give them some examples of people who have done this, and, uh, you know, they're doing just fine. They may have lost the affections of a parent or something like that. They may have hurt some family members, but still, I think it's a good thing to encourage. And I don't think we should, I don't think we should assume that we can't do this. I think we can. Yes, yeah, so it, it, it's almost patronizing to suggest that, that, that we couldn't, I mean, to suggest that, yeah, that, yeah. that it shouldn't, that it's not. On the other hand, I think we all know people who seem to manage this kind of split brain feat of, uh, as Sam said, be- believing one thing on a Sunday and then something totally contradictory yeah, yeah. Or incompatibil- on, in, incompatible on, in, the, in the rest of the week. And there's nothing, I suppose, neurologically wrong with that. I mean, there's no reason why one shouldn't um, have a brain that's split in that mm-hmm. yeah. That kind but, of way. but it but it is unstable in a certain way. But yeah, and I'm sure you're right that people do this and they're very good at it, and they do it by deflecting attention from it. Yeah, and let's start. But but how you can start, live with it? Let's start focusing attention. How, well, how can you uh, live with a contradiction in your? The, the by doctor? not by by forgetting that you're doing this and by not attending to it. I think what I would love to do is is to invent a a memorable catchphrase or term that would rise unbidden in their minds when they caught themselves doing it. Mm -hmm. And then they would think, oh, this is one of those cosmic shifts that that Dennett and Dawkins and Harris and and Hitchens are talking about. Oh, right, and they, they, they think this is somehow illicit. Just, just to create a little more awareness in them of what a strange thing it is that they're doing. Yeah. I'm afraid to say that I think that cognitive dissonance is probably necessary for everyday survival. Everyone does it a bit. Mm. Um, you mean tolerating cognitive dissonance? No, practicing. Actually practicing. I mean, it practicing, because, I mean, I don't know, take the case of someone who's a member of uh, moveon.org. They think the United States government is a brutal, militaristic, imperial regime crushes the poor and invades other people's countries. Mm. But they, they pay their taxes. It's a, a very, very rare that they don't. They send right. their children to school. They do their stuff. You know, they, don't, they don't act all the time as if 10% of what they believe is true. Right. Mm, yeah. uh, Partly because it would be impossible. Same with people in, in the 50s who, members of the John Birch Society, who thought President Eisenhower was a communist. Okay, you get up in the morning, you believe that. Mm. It's the White House is run by the Kremlin. But then you have to go and get the groceries. Right, right. And do all that well, stuff. Yes, why aren't you you still have to go and do too it. Too many commitments, yeah. yeah. yeah but, it, but you absolutely wouldn't be challengeable in your belief. It would be very, very important to you, but there would be no way in your life, your real life, of vindic- vindicating or practicing the opinion that you have. And I'm sure that the same is true of people who say, well, I, you know, I shouldn't really prefer one child to another or one parent to another, but I, I do. I'm just not going to act as if I do. Right. All kinds of things of this kind. But what do you think as, as educators? Or Senator Craig saying he's not gay. Yeah. I'm thinking in his own mind, he's absolutely sure he's not. Right. Yeah. But he um, can't handle, he can't manage his life by saying he is. Or he isn't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so a question I wanted to ask was this. Do, we should ask ourselves what our real objective is. Yeah. Do we, in fact, wish to see a world without faith? I think I would have to say that I don't. I don't either expect to or wish to see so what, do you, what do you mean why, by faith? I don't think it's possible uh, because it, it's, it replicates so fast, faith, as often as 